Minecraft 120's beautiful new biome is the Cherry Grove, with all of the new blocks that come with it. But most Minecraft survival players do prefer to spawn in or near a village because of all the resources it can give you. I've got you covered because I've got four gorgeous seeds where you spawn in a village right next to a Cherry Grove. Let me know which one's your favourite. Let's go. And seed one is really interesting because it is a village, but it's an abandoned village. Look at all those cobwebs. But you do still have some resources over there in the hay bales. There's actually loads of hay bales here. Look at all that bread you could get. There is a broken portal too. So gold and a chest of goodies could be yours. There is also a pillager outpost just across the river. And obviously the whole point of this is there is a cherry grove right there waiting for you. Plus there's a really interesting hole that maybe you could use to start mining in. There's not an open cave entrance, but it definitely gets you down at a few Y levels so you could get started if you can ignore the bird poo blocks just behind me. The cherry grove isn't huge, but it doesn't need to be. Once you've got your saplings, you can make it as large as you'd want. And it's nice that it's right next to all this ice. Plus you've got another cherry grove just a short walk away should you really, really want one next to a much bigger mountain just after the pumpkins. And just by the pumpkins, there's this fissure that goes really deep. So you don't have to dig to get down to minus Y levels. And you really don't have to travel far to get a second village with actual villagers living in it. So trading, breeding, iron farms, all that jazz is right next door too. This village is quite a decent size actually. Heading southwest away from the village, you've got a really nice and properly huge inland sea. And it also takes you towards a dark oak forest as well. So you've got different woods available. And that sea has actually got no fewer than seven shipwrecks in it. Just have a bit of a swim around and you'll find them all. And they're all quite decent ones as well. And if you head northwest from Spawn, you'll get this junction between a dark oak forest, a spruce forest, and a birch forest that's got this little lake inside it. It's about 1,300 on the X and minus 900 on the Y. But although this lake is really pretty and you could build something beautiful here, it's what's underneath that I want to show you. Because the lake hides a little secret. Right underneath this gravel, you are going to find the end portal and the stronghold. Although you will need all 12 eyes of ender. There's also a pretty decent mine shaft right next to it and you can see loads of deep dark biome as well. But what's underneath spawn? Well, there's a pretty decent mine shaft here too with a number of spawners plus again quite a lot of deep dark biome right underneath your feet and 500 blocks directly north you're going to find your ancient city too. Your nether spawn is a basalt delta. You're not quite in a cave you do have a way out and when you do the nether fortress is right there. Well I say it's right there there is a very long open corridor that takes you to it but it is gorgeous and open and very accessible and at minus 600 minus 400 you'll find this really open bastion remnant right by this crimson forest and remember these are really important to be able to upgrade your netherite gear because this is where you'll find the banner patterns to do it. And here's one right here. I actually really like this one. It's got loads of possibilities. The cherry grove right there, the deep dark underneath you, the ancient city not far away, the stronghold not far away. You've got this village here that you could convert with another village really close by if you wanted to bring in villagers. Plus plenty of the other resources like different types of wood really close. But don't choose your Minecraft 120 starting seed just yet. There's more to show you. Here comes seed choice number two. And on seed two, I've spawned in a tree right inside a village next to the mountains and of course my cherry grove. It's only a little village but it does have some villagers to enslave. Sorry, I mean to work in harmony with. But you've got to admit that backdrop is beautiful. Just over the hill to the east there is a broken portal for you to come and check the treasures of and maybe get some extra resources and you can see there in the distance there's a pillager tower too with some allays to come and save. And remember smithing templates can be found in the chest in these quite often. And just past the pillager tower, we have got a big old jungle with a mangrove swamp right at the edge of it. You can see the pillager tower is right there. So pretty much all of your overworld woods are readily available really close to spawn. And speaking of spawn, the building opportunities here are brilliant. Look at all that open space. Plus there is a second village really close by just past another cherry grove. Now on the hill by the edge of the village, there is this tiny little hole and it's really easy to miss. But don't miss it. This is going to save you hours and loads of equipment because if you walk down this hole and you can get all the way down it it's a little bit jiggity but you can you've got a massive open space right underneath you it goes all the way down and when I say massive I properly mean massive it's like the earth has been completely hollowed out this cave is huge and it goes deep 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 and I mean deep dark deep in fact if you are a cave miner this place is awesome it's just one big cave after another all of them pretty much connected up very few spaghetti caves they're all cathedrals and you can just wander around with your torch in your hand picking up all the resource you could possibly want. And yes, there are mine shafts, plenty of spawners and there's actually loads of geodes everywhere. In the nether,
nether, you spawn into the nether wastes. It is nice and open though, so access is easy. And you are right next to this big crimson forest. It goes on for ages. In the opposite direction, the nether wastes go on for quite a little while, but eventually you end up in a soul sand valley. You can see the bones just coming in there. Plus, there is also a basalt delta right next to it. The fortress is hidden away. It's mostly buried at X128, Y80. But once you've found it, everything's there that you need. And at minus 350, 320, you have got this really important and beautifully open bastion remnant. This one is genuinely fab. I'm tempted by it myself, I've got to be honest. But before you make a decision, there are two more to look at. Let's go. C3, you spawn in a village again. And for some reason, I'm underneath a grass block. But if I step out and take a look, we are literally right on that tiny little cherry orchard there and a much bigger one over in the hills just next to us. And the spawn is surrounded by some really cool stuff there. We've got a snowy tiger, a standard tiger, more of those little cherry blossoms right over there, a village which we'll investigate in just a minute. Plenty of open space there on the meadow for us to be able to build, a lot of water which is nice, and right down there we've got a broken portal and a pillager tower just a little bit further. And that pillager tower looks over this great open plains here, nice and flat so you could build something really great. And that snowy tiger in the mountains turns into a giant tiger there in the distance and right next to that we have got that dark oak forest and another broken portal right at the mouth of a dripstone cave and speaking of dripstone caves right at the end of your spawn village we've got the opening to another one this one's much bigger this second village is surrounded by cherry groves and i mean literally surrounding it the cherry trees are even growing into the village there's a third village up there that's just full of cherry trees it's a bit hilly but it's worth a visit there's also a second pillager tower with an alley cage and then on a meadow behind it we've got a fourth village so the surroundings are just gorgeous, loads of villages and resources, but what's it like under the ground? Well, unsurprisingly, given what we already saw, lots and lots and lots of dripstone. But the caves are really open, which means cave mining is really simple, and it's open to the elements up at the surface, which means very little digging for you. Although, if you prefer branch mining, just below Y-20, there's some massive open space with no caves at all, so you can dig through that to your heart's content. There's also plenty of spawners, loads of geodes, and a lot 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 of deep dark in fact the deep dark is everywhere so make sure you tiptoe going through your nether portal you are going to spawn in a nether waste cave and to be honest there's quite a lot of digging to do to get out and do be careful because the lava is real but once you do get to it at 200 250 at the junction between this soul sand valley and the crimson forest you have got the opening to a fortress a lot of it is buried but this bit's open so you can get into it and at minus 300 minus 250 you've got this bastion remnant so you can come and get those really important templates to be able to upgrade your diamond to netherite if that's what you want to do. Another really nice cherry grove village combo spawn for you. It's right on top of it. Lots of building opportunities. If you like this one, let me know in the comments below. In fact, let me know which one you like the most, but you've got one more choice. Let's go there. Seed four coming up. And our fourth seed also spawns you in a village right at the foothills of a mountain. Although it is still beautifully open around you and you've got your cherry groves. In fact, two cherry groves very, very close with the second village even closer. Your spawn village is there on the right. The second village is there on the left. They are so close together. What a great way to start your game. You can have so many resources available to you. I've definitely made a note of this one for a Minecraft 120 survival world, and I've not even looked around yet. The building opportunities could be just too good to miss. There's a savanna just over that mountain, and plenty of forests, including birch, oak, spruce, and goodness knows how much cherry. Plus a teeny tiny little dark oak forest right by this giant tiger. Might be the smallest dark oak forest, I think I've ever seen, but it's got everything you need. Mushrooms, dark oak trees. What more could you want? And if we go around the mountain in the opposite direction from that spawn village, what we find ourselves is another open plains area. And right there, we've got a pillager tower with two alley cages. Although where I've spawned, neither of them have got a lid. They do have an iron golem though. And there is also a broken nether portal there waiting for you. And beyond that broken nether portal, there is a third village right on the water's edge. That is begging for a village conversion. And there are two more villages just across from that pillager tower as well and these ones are right next to the swamp so you've got frogs spawning naturally and also you can make yourself an iron golem driven slime farm underneath the spawn village you have got a network of spaghetti caves taking you down to y0 which run into a number of spawners but when you go below y0 what tends to happen is you get big cathedral caves and a lot of them are deep dark caves you can see here you are 
absolutely surrounded by deep dark biome running through all of these caves, Spaghetti Caves and also Cathedral Caves. But there is a mine shaft not too far away, just past all of that deep dark, with more spawners. Your nether spawn is another nether wastes cave, but it opens up right onto a basalt delta, so access out isn't too bad. And if you can navigate all of those twists and turns and get to this soul sand valley at minus 100, minus 400, you are going to find a massive fortress that's relatively open so you can get into it fairly easily. And at minus 250, you have got the Bastion Remnant. It's mostly buried, but easy to access from this point. So I suggest you come in here and dig your way through. But watch out for those piglins. They're not going to fancy you much. Another really pretty village spawn. In fact, I'd call this a double village spawn, really, wouldn't you? With cherry blossoms everywhere. With these four seeds, I think you're spoiled for choice. So which one's your favourite? What would you build in them? I'm really interested to find out. And I'd also really like to know what kind of village spawns you would like, whether it is cherry, whether it is mangrove, what is it you'd like to spawn your village next to? If I've not really done it, maybe I'll make a video on them as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. You take it easy now. Bye.